welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there, AstroVentures. Welcome back. If you're new to this Astrophotography channel, my name is George, and this is the Astrophotography channel for DSLR and mirrorless camera bodies combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Skygetter Pro or the Star Adventurer. Now I'm going to jump ahead here in Stellarium as we take a look at our targets for the month of February. And uh, my hope is that I'll finally get to go out and actually do some astrophotography. Because unfortunately, I have been under clouds for months now. And uh, I apologize for the fall off in the regular videos that's happened because uh, we just haven't been able to do anything. And, uh, you know, normally, you know, I kind of chuckle at those of uh, our viewers that are like in England where uh, it endlessly seems to rain and I'm out here in the desert where I endlessly seem to have the clear skies and that is just not happening and uh, wow just so crushing so let's get started here uh, first we're going to take a look at M42 which is the Orion Nebula in last month's update I talked about how we are uh, past the peak of the Orion Nebula. It is now starting to uh, head back south as uh, we move towards summer. And so with that, you know, being, going into the month of February here, uh, if you decide to go for Orion, you've probably got about three hours that you can get it. And I'm basing that off of my location here in Utah for myself to uh, go after this target per um, when I have complete and total darkness, that happens at 7.30 at night. And then by the time uh, the night sky rotates around and M42 drops down around 30 degrees on the horizon, which is the point that I don't like to pursue any further because the, uh, the atmosphere just starts to uh, kind of gunk up an image. That's giving me about three hours to uh, image the Orion Nebula before I get into that thicker at atmosphere. So 7.30, on the mark, get on there and go, and I'm able to pull off about three hours still on the Orion Nebula. And then, of course, right beside it, uh, you have the Horsehead and Flame Nebula. And, you know, being the proximity that they are, same thing applies. 7.30, I can start shooting immediately, but uh, about three hours later, it looks like I am done. And so these uh, targets, if you haven't gotten them, this is going to be your last chance because next month, as this um, you know continues to plunge further south, there just really isn't enough uh, hours in a night, in my personal opinion. I think to have a, a good image starts at about three hours worth of data. And so that's kind of my mark. Once it gets below three hours, it really becomes kind of rough. You could pull it off with the Orion Nebula for a couple hours just because of the uh, the intensity, how bright it is. But as a general rule for most targets, if I can't pull three hours, um, it's just you know lo no longer doable. And then uh, over here to the side, if you can actually pull off a few nights of uh, imaging we have the uh, witch head and um, the witch head is a reflection nebula it's reflecting the light off of Rigel and uh, I apologize I, I haven't given the, um, the messier numbers or so forth the Orion Nebula being M42 the uh, horse head and flame you've got LDN 1730 for the horse head and the flame being NGC 2024 and then, of course, this one that I'm showing to you here, the Witch Head NGC 1909. This is a particularly large target. With the previous ones, 
depending on how you want to shoot, because there's so much nebulosity around the Orion constellation, 50 millimeters and greater, uh, going after the Orion Nebula, you know, a three, 400 millimeter works great. The Horsehead uh, Nebula, 400, 500 millimeter works great. And of course, as always, I am referencing uh, using these focal lengths on a lens paired with a crop sensor camera and not the full frame. But with the Witch Head here, NGC 1909 being a reflection off of uh, Rigel, if you could get, because this one's really kind of late in the season to go after, but um, if you decide to go after this one and you have a couple nights back to back to back, um, you know, I, I would absolutely go for it. But you really, really, really need to have those uh, clean skies that you're not going to have the light pollution going in there because uh, with the fact that it already is going to sit, uh, you know, towards the uh, low side, and the fact that it is reflecting light off of Rigel, I have found that light pollution can really mess with this target. So, you know, if you can go for it. Now, a real benefit is if you do happen to have the uh, Samyang 135mm f2 lens, and I know that has become a very much a favorite in the astrophotography um, you know, family out here of uh, what, you know, lenses that we gravitate to. And uh, with that F2 capability, one, I would uh, stop it down to about an F3, uh, just uh, tighten it up, clean up the optics a bit. But with that, it would really help for the longer exposures that are going to need, be needed for this target. Combined with the focal length because of the sheer size of this target, and with that 135 millimeter, you could not only pull in the uh, witch head, but you could also get the star Rigel in that image. So that's a great one to go after. Now, these targets that I mentioned, this would be the first half of the night, and we're getting ready to transition into the summer and the summer targets. So what I want to suggest, get out there. Uh, like I said, for myself, 730 is when dark hits, and then I can image on these for about three hours. And then at that point, uh, I need to transition over to some of the other targets. And if you do have those, uh, one other one that's just uh, still available, the Rosette Nebula, NGC 2244. And uh, let me jump over to that one here. The uh, Rosette would be another one that you could get. Uh, this one would allow you to pull off uh, four hours in the night just because... As we look at this, and I'm zooming this out, as the Orion constellation moves over to the west through the night, this one being back a little bit, you can get an extra hour on it. So if you haven't gotten the rosette, uh, go for it. And although it does have a lot of hydrogen alpha, it's strong enough in its presence that you can use a stock camera. Now, back to my original plan. As I was saying, the Orion, the horse head, the flame, the witch head, and then uh, kind of going into the rosette, you're looking about three to, uh, at the most, you know, going after the rosette, four hours. And so if you started shooting at 7.30 at night over the new moon weekend, you've still got time once these targets, you know, go out of, uh, you know, an ideal shooting, uh, you know, angle in the sky. And with that said, what I want to suggest to you is for the second half of your night, jump over to M101, which is the pinwheel galaxy. And let me adjust the time here. So we started out and we were at 19.35 or 7.30 in the evening. And we decided to shoot for um, the uh, three to four hours. So here we are, we're looking at about 11.30 at night. And we've actually got an excellent opportunity to finish the night. And for myself, um, uh, morning light, where it starts to mess with the uh, the total darkness of the night sky, happens at uh, just about 10 minutes before 6 a.m. for where I'm located here in northern Utah. And for that reason, from about 11.30 all the way until almost 6 in the morning, you could swing over here and you could target the pinwheel galaxy and with this one you're going to want a uh, focal length 
of uh, 500 millimeter or greater uh, paired with a crop sensor works really well but this is now starting to uh, you know earlier in the night it was too low but after these other targets that I've suggested have dropped down this is now coming into uh, the sky at just above uh, 30 degrees in azimuth and so here we go we're looking at 35 degrees there uh, we're getting high enough that we're out of that 30 degree range that I stay out of due to the thickening in the atmosphere there. And you could jump onto this and then ride this through the rest of the evening. And then, depending on what you want to do, you could also jump over to, let's see here. And yeah, let me just punch it in there. It'll be easier. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. And you could also go after, right next door to the pinwheel, is you could go after M51, which is the Whirlpool. There you go. And this is going to be another one where, uh, you know, maximum focal length uh, to get on it. And just like the pinwheel, the Whirlpool does not need any kind of a... Uh, you know, uh, you know, modified camera, stock camera is going to work great. However, you do really want to look for uh, the sky being very stable, the atmosphere being stable. If the stars are twinkling, it means you have unsettled air. And these smaller targets that you're going to have to crop down on and really zoom in, it's just not an ideal night if the stars are twinkling. But if the stars seem to be calm, uh, in spite of the fact these are small targets, so you, you got to really reach in and then you're going to have to crop down on You could absolutely capture the uh, pinwheel and the whirlpool galaxy. And uh, those are your targets that I'm going to suggest for the month of February. And what I'm really excited about, and uh, it's kind of like the same excitement that I get uh, <laughs> when um, I first see Pleiades pop up over the horizon every year because I know there's some great stuff coming that I haven't seen you know in a while but uh, one of the things that's coming up here actually we don't even need that is let's see here jump down to the earth okay swing this around go in the wrong direction need to get over to the east but here we go. Let's see here. Okay. And what I am after. Is. If I could type this correctly. Oh, there we go. I wasn't quite far enough. Cygnus the Swan is starting to pop up. Now, um, obviously, Cygnus won't be, uh, you know, it'll, it'll take another couple months before Cygnus is going to be up. But, you know, it gets me excited because here it is. These targets are coming back around. And uh, it won't be that much longer before uh, Cygnus is up high in the sky and we're going after all that beautiful uh, nebula that exists there. So, there you have it. Those are my suggestions for the month of February. Uh, M42, the Orion Nebula, the Horsehead, LDN1730, Flame uh, Nebula, NGC2024, and the Witch Head, NGC1909, combined with uh, the Rosette, NGC2244. All of those, uh, we're starting to say goodbye to them, but you can pull off three hours uh, on those targets with an additional hour on the rosette and then uh, finish off your night swing over to the north there go for the pinwheel and the whirlpool m101 and m51 uh, maximum focal length for those two and then uh, when you wind down your night uh, as you're packing up the gear certainly take a look over there to the northeast and uh, say hello to Cygnus because uh, she's getting ready to fly back into our night skies. So, um, once again, uh, thank you for supporting Astro Venture. I don't know how you guys in uh, England and some of these overcast countries do it because I am dying 
without uh, having any astrophotography, you know, having been available to me with, with all this unusual cloud cover here in the desert. So, till next time, uh, I would love to see you over at our Facebook group, AstroVenture DSLR. And if you like the video and the content of what we're doing here, consider liking, subscribing, and ringing the bell. Till next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.